So there's an expression that I use a lot on this channel called tailoring the narrative. And usually within the context that I use it, it's when an individual will display very select amounts of information to make their position look more favorable, even if it is not fully representative of the truth. And typically within videos that I use that statement, it's my mission statement to try to remove some of the black ink that they put on the truth to make it so it is not redacted anymore and easy to see the context with which it is meant to be seen. Because the context is one of the things that you need to have in order to understand why the situation became what it did and why certain individuals may in fact be right or wrong. Typically through doing this, I try to display the evidence that I have as well as convey what I'm able to interpret from the evidence presented that I possess, as well as how it looks from my perspective. And even still, I will try to illustrate that it is important for you, the viewer, to continue to look into this deeper and don't just take anyone's fucking word for this, even mine. That is important to situations like the one I'm going to be discussing today. Now, for those of you who follow my Twitter, you may be aware of the Drake and Ader drama that's been unfolding these past uh, few days, close to a week now. And that is going to be the topic of discussion for today. However, I'm going to be structuring it around a particular piece of content that was uploaded recently about the drama itself. Using this as a framework, I will also be displaying multiple pieces of context that were dismissed and left out that are important to understanding the situation as a whole. So let's begin. So for anyone who is on Twitter and a member of the Warrior Cats community has most likely heard of a situation with a user called Dan Draws, what happened, and before I get into this video, in case you haven't, I'm just going to do a quick rundown on some of the things that happened. Um, no, this isn't all of it, and I know there are other people that she affected, and I'm not going to be going into too much detail, but Diana recently, about a week ago, had a post made about her on Twitter. So this is going to come up a little bit later, but I'm going to be making reference to this segment. I want you to keep it in your head. Since this post was made, some one of the name of Buttons have been making posts on Twitter. Unfortunately, I don't have all of them, but I do have some, but they're demanding Nate come forward with the evidence and expose the child's abuse to the public. Well, since you're not happy to provide the evidence of that conversation, I will provide it myself. And I can kind of see why you're not happy to provide that evidence, because looking at it, you can actually see that Buttons was willing to try to protect the victim's name. Moreover, it is very clearly illustrated that Buttons did in fact care for the victim's safety, because before anything would be done, an attempt to reach the authorities would be made. Which, mind you, I'm going to refer for the first time back to that earlier segment. Diana recently, about a week ago, had a post made about her on Twitter. This is far more effective than a simple call-out post on Twitter with nothing backing it. Add that crossing out the names won't do anything. It won't protect the victim and... Yes, crossing out the names does absolutely nothing. Blacking out the names and redacting the information does nothing. But oh my fucking lord, a Twitter call-out post with nothing to support it. That's the correct answer. Here's the thing to keep in mind. When this person had contacted Navy Discord, it wasn't asked, is the child okay? What can I do to spread the word? Oh, so you do have the information. Great. So now I can actually just, uh, instead of chalking it up to you being in the dark and, you know, maybe not having all the information about the situation, I can chalk this up to you outright lying out your fucking ass to try to prove your point. Because you're clearly, you have these screenshots. You've established that in your own content. And I really don't see a reason why I can't just establish you as an unreliable narrator now. Once Nate denied this person, they started to go to Twitter and make posts, calling Nate such thing as a bowl of autism and a... Come on, man. That doesn't make you very credible. Alright, first of all, uh, ignoring the evidence and only displaying the evidence that suits your needs doesn't make you credible at all, so uh, jot that down. Second... Using an insult doesn't make you not a credible source. It just makes you someone who's insulting somebody else. That's it. It maybe makes you rude, makes you childish, and makes you kind of a jerk. Doesn't make you not credible. I do it all the time. My videos are still just as credible as any other commentary video, and there's plenty of other people who also use insults in their videos. Typically, as long as the videos stand, they tend to be just as credible as anybody else despite these insults. So, 
Also, while we're on the subject of credibility, I don't think it speaks very highly of Drake's credibility, considering Drake was willing to just make a call-out post, and when people naturally wanted proof of the accusations, which, mind you, these are accusations, uh, pedophilia is a pretty serious crime when I, when I last checked, so um, if these are, these are real accusations, people are naturally going to want proof, and that's kind of within their right when it's been made public by a public figure which Drake happens to be a public figure as they have a very sizable following. So it's pretty fucking natural that people are going to want to follow up on that and actually look at the evidence themselves. See, Nate is a third party in all of this. They aren't personally involved in the, uh, in the case and have no connection and cannot, even if they wanted to, which, which they do not, to post screenshots. If this is true, then... Nate did not have any right to post the call out on Twitter in a public forum as a public figure to begin with. So your argument is completely collapsing in on itself, you fucking brainlet. Buttons also said that no evidence would not hold up in the court of law. But here's the thing, people personally involved and the victim do have evidence. Just because they do not wish to release it doesn't mean it isn't true and doesn't exist. Nate and many other credible sources have seen them. Well, considering we don't know who these other quote-unquote credible sources are, I'm just going to disregard that comment entirely until some of them come forward and actually state that this is verified. But we're going to unpack a little bit since you've decided to pack Nate in there with the credible sources bit. Um, I'm going to debunk that right fucking now with my own involvement in this drama. You will also find the links to these Twitter threads in the description of this video so that you yourself can actually see the proof of what I am saying. So there was an accusation that Nate had apparently levied against me, which is that I am transphobic, which was based off of a cropped screenshot and removed the context of the entire conversation by and large, which is necessary to see why this is untrue. Not only that, but upon discussion with people who actually DM'd me about this, people who were originally on Nate's side, they understood my point and my position once I had explained my situation to them. So to start with the context of that accusation with the crop screenshot, that was born off of a thread where I added Nate and I also added my boyfriend because I had seen over the past day this conversation unfold and escalate. I had added my boyfriend because he was starting to get very, very, very aggressive with the situation and I added him to tell him to please calm down. I added Nate so that I could ask them if I could have a conversation in direct messages. This was the direct message I also sent them to try to reach out, to verify that I, in fact, did want to resolve things and find an alternate solution if possible. I will also illustrate that on Twitter, it is impossible to send direct messages once somebody has blocked you, which Nate did block me before making the callout post, meaning I could not have possibly sent this direct message from my own account unless I had sent it prior to Nate blocking me. Now onto the accusation itself that I am transphobic. That is not true. If you actually look at at the conversation how it had devolved, I was attempting on numerous occasions to be very civil so that I could try to de-escalate the situation. Moreover, many individuals after that had attacked me for using the wrong pronouns. The reason that original post that was cropped actually came to be is because many people started treating me like I was some kind of monster because I didn't read Nate's fucking bio. Congratulations, welcome to Twitter. Not everyone who interacts with you is going to read your bio before doing so, and if you have that as an expectation, it is an unreasonable one. You are not going to be very well liked if you maintain that expectation and attack people who don't do it, you fucking moron. However, digging in even fucking deeper shows the exact illustration of how stupid that callout was, because not only is it not true, it is provably untrue, because if you actually watch this content, these character stills that you see, one of the artists who I consistently promote because they have created these stills for me, who I have commissioned for them, and commissioned for numerous other pieces, including my Telegram sticker pack, they happen to be transgender themselves. If I was transphobic, I would not be willing to either hire 
or promote a transgender artist. And before you say that that would be illegal on my end, it factually would not be. The reason why is because I am not a business. I am an independent buyer, and I am allowed to make that kind of decision if that is what I so choose. Therefore, if I were actually transphobic, I would not be doing such things. Even further, if you have watched the intro on my channel, and you see the four pieces of art that are in that intro, one of them was also created by another transgender artist that I have commissioned, that I have maintained a friendship with since 2016. This would be an incredibly long con with almost no guaranteed payoff, were this the case. Jesus. Now that I've actually debunked Nate as a credible fucking source, we can continue. I'm sorry that segment was so long. Buttons had never previously had any contact with the victim. The victim did not reach out to them and they pushed themselves into the situation, taking advantage of this and starting to stir up things as they did get lots of attention from this and still are. Two things I want to point out right now. One, they had every right to get involved when the accusations became public on a public platform. Two, you are just as guilty of this because from what I can tell, you were not involved either. Not only that, you are also gaining a lot of attention for this. Therefore, everything you have just attributed to Buttons is equally attributable to you. This person does not know anything going on behind the scenes. Of course they don't know what's going on behind the scenes. Nate is keeping the information out of the public's eye, despite the fact the accusations were made in the public's eye. This is on Nate, not on Buttons. This is not a defense point. This is a damning point against the person you're trying to defend. This is showing how inept you actually are, and how inept Nate actually is at what they are attempting to do themselves. It isn't the public nor Twitter's concern to be involved. I disagree, and I'm going to show you that clip again. Diana recently, about a week ago, had a post made about her on Twitter. Nate got the public involved. Therefore, the public is now well within their rights to get involved and actually ask for proof because we should always want proof before we decide to just blindly accept things right oh i'm sorry i'm sorry we didn't take nate's word for it oh no guys guys we did we, we didn't take nate's word for it <laughs> we fucked up guys we didn't just blindly accept that someone might be a pedophile we, we wanted evidence of that oh my god we fucked up they think that actions aren't being taken and that they or any person deserves to have evidence to this. They are using it for views and attention and no matter how much logic is thrown at them will not take things down it. This argument makes absolutely no sense. If anybody asks for evidence and wants to actually help, you know, prove that somebody may be an actual threat to people on a public platform, um, they're doing it for views and attention. but. If, if Drake wants to make a public call-out post with nothing supporting it, um, it's suddenly not for views and attention. Like, I'm, I'm not, I'm seeing a huge, like, I'm having trouble following this. Like, it, there's a big disconnect here. The, the, these things don't really add up too much. The only person that could take the action is the victim, and believe me, that is being done. Well, if you don't want to get people involved, don't start making accusations on a public platform where people might see it. Gee willikers, guys, that was real fucking hard to riddle out. All people can do, screenshots with public or no, is be careful. As I've said, screenshots will not change that. Buttons cannot take screenshots and bring them to the police. That would not work in any manner as they are a third party. No, but it would certainly help people believe you. <laughs> like, Jesus Christ, is this person fucking real? Like, this... This has to be a fucking troll. I have to be taking some kind of bait. This can't be real. You you cannot be a real person. This cannot be a real position you're trying to present. <laughs> I don't accept this. I don't. I don't. How does not having the evidence publicly available not make the world safer, but making a call-out post with nothing supporting it suddenly make the world safer? Like, this is, this is a huge disconnect, because if you had evidence and you could present it and safely do so, as well as if there was an established, you know, line of pattern, like there was something that this is something they've done previously, as been insinuated within this drama, then um, 
this would certainly actually make everything a lot safer because people would be able to very easily believe that they need to stay away from this person instead of just off of a baseless accusation. See, this is where your argument starts to really, really, really hit a speed bump that you're not overcoming. With proof, even if it won't put anyone in jail, it will help people understand this is not just someone saying shit. This is not people chatting shit. The problem is when you make a call out post with no proof, nothing backing it, nothing supporting it, that's what it can be interpreted as. And that's why people do ask for proof, especially when, again, these kinds of call outs are being made on a public platform. Having their personal situation all over the internet is traumatizing and this hasn't been easy for anyone at all. And I wish the victim well. I think that this is a terrible situation and I hope that everything works out for the best, assuming what you've been saying is true, and believe me, it's giving you a huge benefit of the doubt, considering I've been given no real solid evidence. But if they are telling the truth, and if the situation is, you know, devolving the way that you have stated it is, I do wish the, the victim the best, and I hope that everything works out okay for them. And I sincerely hope that if this person is, in fact, a predator, they are put away. That said, I still think we do need some kind of proof before we just take someone at their fucking word, especially when, again, I have already debunked them as a credible source. This person is demanding these screenshots and get involved in a personal matter. They have acted fairly immature about it. They even made a video, as I've mentioned, but this video is poorly in place as they personally know nothing about this. They don't even know the victim. They, in fact, don't know anything about the victim. Yes, when calling out someone for these actions, screenshots can be important in some cases, and if the victim is okay with them being posted, that's fine. However, this victim is not, which is completely reasonable. Having their personal situation all over the internet is traumatizing, and this hasn't been easy for anyone at all. And that, Andrew, would be entirely Drake's fault. It would be. The reason why? Nobody had to know, and this could have been kept very easily under wraps, if Drake hadn't made a call-out post in public with nothing to back it. The fact that there was nothing backing it is why there's been backlash on so many different people. Not only that, the fact that there was a post at all is one of the reasons why this has become so widespread and why there's even an ability to have backlash on anybody for questioning it when apparently Drake was not willing to provide evidence. Everything that is bad about this situation has come out of Drake, even fucking tweeting about it. Because even if Drake had kept this in-house in their Discord server, fine. That's fine. I understand. At that point, that's still, that's still whatever. That's Drake's business at that point. But since it was a public tweet in a public place by your own admission in your content, Andrew, means everything that came out of this that was negative every bit of backlash that I have gotten, that Buttons has gotten, that you are getting currently, that Drake has gotten, that has all come from Drake. End of line, full fucking stop, Andrew. I'll be linking that video in the description, by the way, in case you want to actually go watch that yourself. I don't know why you would, but, you know, if you want to just kill a few brain cells, it's, it's, it's less enjoyable than drinking, but it's a lot cheaper. It's actually free, so I would... If you can't afford to go, you know, grab a pint, go watch that video and just feel your just feel yourself drift off into nothingness because of how stupid that shit is. Anyway, that's gonna be just about it for the video. I just wanted to add one final note. There was a comment in the comment section of that video where Drakenator apparently tries to justify everything that is being said about buttons off of the fact that buttons has said the N word. This is, again, and I, I just wanted to address this one real quick. This is not related to the conversation at hand. This is an attempt to distract and justify with something that they did not know at the time that is also not even related to any of this. So the fact that Draconator seems to think that this is even remotely a point kind of just speaks to how fucking stupid Draconator themselves actually are. So... Anyway, I'm glad you all checked out the video. I will also be leaving a link in the description to Button's original video, as well as a video from my buddy for no good reason, who briefly talks about this, uh, this drama within that uh, content. Uh, there's a lot of things in that video, and honestly, both of those videos are very good. So if you like this video, please go check out those videos and leave a like and let them know that I said hi. All right, I'll catch you guys later.